25th should have been a great day for Madeline Soto. Her 13th birthday party, celebrating a new phase in her life, becoming a teenager. But it wasn't a great day. It was her last day. Madeline was reported missing the following day, and four days later, her body was found 22 miles from home off the side of the road in some brush. So what happened to this little girl? What was her life like? Madeline was living with her mom, Jen Soto. Jen had a boyfriend who had been in her life for about six years. His name is Stefan Stearns. Stefan is currently locked up. Police found disturbing images on his phone, resulting in 20 counts of child sex abuse related charges and 40 charges involving hundreds of images and videos of that abuse. Jen refers to Stefan as Madeline's stepfather, although they were never married. Stefan is the prime suspect in Madeline's death and the last person known to be with her. Jen Soto has not made any public statements since her daughter's body was found and has not been named as a suspect. Right now, the murder investigation continues, and tonight we will take a closer look at Madeline's family dynamics. Where is her father, and how much of a role did he play in her life? Then we'll take a much closer look at the photographs, including this one of Madeline's 13th birthday. Who is that in the reflection in the glass? Who was at that party? We're looking for answers as we continue to investigate the tragic life and death of Madeline Soto. So these are the questions that we all ask. Um, what caused this birthday party to be the last time that Madeline Soto was to be seen alive? Why wasn't her mother at the birthday party? And why was Stefan Stearns, why did he play such a big role in her life? He was not, uh, he was certainly not her stepfather, right? He was her mom's boyfriend, seems on and off. Now, when we talk about these 60 charges that, that were filed by the state attorney general's office, along with those charges uh, goes the fact that each one of them were pulled off images on a cell phone that have been vetted to find out to, to match them to a location. And many of them, the location was Jennifer Soto's home, Madeline Soto's home, the place that Stefan Stearns was living. So matching these images to a location, matching these images and these charges to a date, and that's the beauty about digital evidence. And there's nothing beautiful in this case except the evidence against this guy. So they take the digital evidence inside that phone and they match it up against this predator, right? And then add that when he tried to do, to erase his phone to erase all the images on his phone until he realized, or he didn't realize, he, he found out that he couldn't do that because the images were still there. And that's what has him in the Osceola County Jail right now, facing life in prison. But oh, we're not satisfied with that because Madeline Soto was murdered. And we want the person who did this to answer for these charges. And so far, um, the charges have not been forthcoming. So when we talk about going back and what was his role 
in this family? How did he get in so close with this family besides being the mother's boyfriend and at one time her calling him the stepfather of Madeline? Well, in, in the cases of a predatory offender like this, there's something called grooming. He groomed his way into that. He groomed his way into the life of this little girl. He groomed his way in so that she wouldn't tell anybody. And is did something change on her 13th birthday that now all deals were off and that deal was no longer going to be adhered to because she had even said that she wanted to run away and live in the woods. If that's not a sign uh, of abuse, I don't know what it is. And I'm no psychologist, no child psychologist. I don't have to be. A little girl saying she wants to run away and live in the woods. Your home when you're a child should be the place that you're most comfortable being in. That's your, it's your safe place, right? But yet... This was not a safe place for Madeline Soto because she had this predator living with her, among her, in the same household with her mom, who was supposed to be protecting her. The same Disney World predator, right? And we'll say it. Disney World didn't want to admit that he worked for them, but there he is in their uniform, right? And you think about who this guy is and how many other children must have been the savage's victims, right? How many others? How many other victims are there of this predatory man? Do we know? No, right now we don't know. But that's why what we want is for this murder indictment to come forward. And many of us, of course, of course, are waiting for the autopsy results, right? We want to know how Madeline was killed, right? One thing we do know, and people frequently forget this, we know the manner of death because that was already ruled, wasn't it? It was ruled a homicide. It's being called a murder. So we know that already. But what we don't know is the cause of death. And what could that be? Could be many things. Could be asphyxia, strangulation, blunt trauma. Could be poisoning. It could be someone was drugged. All of those things are possibilities, but we don't know that yet, do we? So all of these things that we're waiting on, uh, Debbie McCarthy from the chat, he's disgusting, makes me sick to think of what he did to that poor girl, and God knows who else. Well, Debbie McCartney, that's what we're going over now. You're right. Uh, predators like this don't have single victims. Uh, they're usually very prolific, which is very, very scary that they have so many victims. Uh, uh, Michelina Serino, he cannot be in general population, no doubt. He, you know, I don't know why you guys are worried about his life in jail because uh, right now I think the jailers know this and they're not going to uh, put him anywhere near the general population because he wouldn't probably last. Just as if, just like Rex Ewerman, the Gilgo Beach serial killer on Long Island. They cannot put him in general population, and they're aware of that. In fact, whenever he has to move from one part of the jail to another part of the jail, they have to lock the jail down and move him and then get him to where he is, have him locked in and in a safe place, and then they can reopen the jail. 